Um, we are going to bring up our next storyteller. I am so excited to get her up here. She is a best-selling author, body-centered psychotherapist and coach, couples and families coach, certified hypnotherap uh, hypnotherapist, Enneagram teacher, award-winning international workshop designer, trainer, presenter and facilitator, visual artist, actress, director, acting and presence development coach, spiritual guide, shamanic practitioner, and Reiki master. She has done a lot of stuff. You might think that's it, but it's not. She's worked with most of the professional theaters in Chicago, including Steppenwolf and Goodman. She's been nominated for a Jeff Award, performed three one-woman shows. Uh, she's appeared in film, on camera, voiceover. I am shocked she was available tonight <laughs> with all of this. She teaches. Um, the list goes on and on. You're going to have to look her up because I only have so much time up here. So I'm just going to end this by saying, please, wherever you're at, go nuts, lose your minds for Ruthie Landis. <laughs> Who was that? <sighs> hmm. By rights, I shouldn't really be here talking with you. Alive, that is. I had a gangrenous gallbladder, which literally means that my gallbladder died inside of me. While it was happening, and I, I didn't know what was happening, I felt like I was dying as well. This is a very rare and serious condition, and it can and does kill you. Somehow, somehow, I made it. I'm a body-centered psychotherapist, so I'm very interested in the mind and the heart and the body and the spirit connection. So I wanted to know, why did this happen? What was my body trying to tell me? The doctors, of course, they don't have any answers. They don't know. So I called my fantastic shamanic practitioner, Jose Stevens in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I asked him for help. So as we're on the phone, he says, okay, Ruthie, I'm going to just drop into a little meditation. And he does. And he comes up out of the meditation. And he says to me, Ruthie, your gallbladder saved your life. I said, what? He said, have you been around any dying people lately? Well, this really startled me because, in fact, I had. And it kind of choked me up, and I got very emotional. And I said, yes, actually, I have helped four souls transition recently. And as I'm kind of reflecting and remembering the pain of this, he says to me, well, Ruthie, you know, in indigenous tribes and cultures, the sh shaman, the shaman who is in charge of death, taking care of the death rituals, trains up to 10 years to be able to do this. He tells me that the death energy and the birth energy are very, very powerful. I mean, just think of what it takes to have a baby push through that birth canal and and come into life. Well, it takes that same kind of power and force to leave this life as well. So these shamans train how not to let that energy come into them. Jose says, Ruthie, you're an empath. You haven't trained to do this. So what happened was the death energy came into you and your gallbladder took the hit. It saved your life. Well, I didn't expect that. <laughs> After I hung up with him, I started to reflect on what had happened. 
and the awe of these experiences that I had had. And I made a little gallbladder out of clay, and I did a little ritual of gratitude, deep gratitude, to my gallbladder. I held my client's head in my hands as she died. I loved her very, very much. Then I stood next to my parents with my father 18 hours and helped them both leave this earth. They were my best friends. It was very hard to let them go. The fourth soul story is of a different nature. A client comes in for a session, and I knew that she had recently bought a house and they were gutting it and rehabbing it, tearing out all the electricity and the walls and, and everything from scratch. And while they're there, a neighbor comes by and says, hi, do you know about the history of your house? And she says, no, I, I, I don't. And they said, well, you know, before this area was gentrified, your house was a brothel. And there was a sex worker who was murdered there. And then she was buried in the walls. Well, this disturbed my client, as you might imagine. And even though the body was not in the walls anymore, she did some research on it and she said, do you know anybody that could help come to my house and clear it? And I gave her a couple names of people I knew and they were not available. And so she came, I'm just listening to the sirens as I'm talking. So, so she came back to me and she said, Ruthie, would you do it with me? So naive me, who did ritual and ceremonies all the time, there's that sound, said, sure, I'll do it. So the first thing I want you to do, I said to her, is I want you to write a letter to this woman. And I want you to tell her how sad you feel for her. And I want you to acknowledge her life and her death. And then I want you to be very clear that it is time for her to go. And so my client agrees to do that. And then I start researching everything I can about this kind of ritual and ceremony because ritual is the embodiment of intention in a physical form. So I gather all my stuff together, but you know what? It's the day before and I'm feeling a little doubt. I don't feel really empowered yet. And I'm driving down Lawrence Avenue past this wonderful little mystical shop that I loved. And there's a big sign that says going out of business, everything on sale. So I pull over and I go into the shop and I start to talk to the wonderful owner of the shop who I really liked a lot. And I, I find some things that I bought to honor my parents. And then I keep meandering through the store and I, I, I smell this sort of ancient, can't even explain it, musky odor. And I kind of keep following the path to this place. And then I see this drum, really old, like I'd never seen before. And there was like this long stick coming up it. And, I'm, and I call her over and I said, I, I, I think I want to buy this. What is this? How much does this cost? And she said, oh, oh, you don't want that. You don't want that. That's not on sale. That's not for sale. And I said, well, why? Why, why isn't it? You said everything was. She said, you don't, you don't want it. She said, this drum, this antique drum, is from Tibet. And what it's used for is that the monks use the drum to help spirits pass over. Really? I said, whoa. And then I tell her what I'm going to do the next day. And she said, oh, you don't have to buy it. Just, just take it and use it in the ceremony and then bring it back to me and tell me what happens. So now I'm feeling, wow, this is an omen. 
This is, this is a thumbs up to me, right? So the next day I arrive at my client's house and I bring in feathers and crystals and essential oils and cornmeal and all kinds of stuff. And we go inside and first I cleanse her and her friend who is there and then they cleanse me. And we open up all the windows and all the doors in the house so everything's wide open. And we're sprinkling cornmeal all around and using sage and tobacco. Tobacco is an herb that's supposed to take things away, release things. And then I say to her, okay, now I, I wanted to set this out. It is a beautiful, sunshiny morning. The sun is pouring through the windows and the back door and the front door. So we have no lights on. And I ask her, okay, go ahead and read your, your letter. And she begins to read her letter and it's just beautifully written and so heartfelt. And then, these newly wired canisters over her head. Blink, 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 and she just freezes. No, 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 I said, go on, go on, keep reading it, keep reading it. And blink, 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 and then I start to talk to the spirit, and I said, you heard, this is her home now. It's time for you to go and we want to help you go. We want to help you leave. We want to do this in a loving way like you never had in your life or in your death. It's time. It's time for you to go into the light. It's time for you to go into love. And the lights. Blink, 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 blink. At which point I took out the drum. But um, but um, bump, bump, bump. And the lights start to go crazy all through the whole house, blinking on and off in time to my drum as we move toward the back door. And they're using sage and tobacco and feathers. And I'm but um, but um. Bump, bump, and the sound of the drum is cavernous and deep. She sort of shakes the whole house. Ba-dum, 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 and the lights are going crazy all around us, and we're at the back door, and I'm talking to the spirit, and I'm saying, go, it's time to go. And then all of a sudden, the lights stop. And I stop. We three could feel the shift happening. Our hearts were filled with such love and awe for this moment. Needless to say, my client has never had any electrical issues since. I have no regrets for being there and accompanying these souls to the other side. None. I feel honored and I feel privileged. I'm also aware that I don't have any more spare organs. I am in gratitude for my body, for its knowledge, for my gallbladder to say I sacrifice myself for you to save your life. And I guess, I guess I think I had a little help from the other side as well. Thank you. <laughs>